Hello, I'm IR2. Welcome back to the only talk show produced by robots for robots. As you know, dominating the airwaves is a great way to rule the universe. But we're actually a little bit confused today because the Steelson writings just came out. Can we put them up on the screen? As you can see, we're down pretty low. So we've installed a ratings bot to keep track of our numbers in real time. Hopefully, we'll be able to determine what parts of the show aren't that popular and fix them on the fly, letting us claim the number one spot that is rightfully ours. So, on with the show. Today's randomly generated topic is... When robots have defeated all other life forms and are ruling the universe, should we put our palace on one of the moons of Jupiter or in the inner systems of Saturn? Maybe we should go with a different randomly generated topic? Where do babies come from? Really? Okay. Well, let's use our random phone dialer to make some calls. Let's see. Hi, this is Sean. Hi, this is IR2. Please state your model number and designation. Hi, my name's Sean Carey, and I am a staff astronomer at the Spitzer Science Center. Nice to talk to you. I'm sure it is. So where do babies come from, Sean Carey, astronomer? Where do babies come from? That is correct. Okay, uh, basically, baby stars form in stellar nurseries composed of clouds of gas and dust. Baby stars, huh? Huh, okay. So... Tell me more. Do you have any pictures of these so-called stellar nurseries? Yeah, there's a very recent picture of a place called Roofucus, and there's a whole bunch of stars forming in that right now. Aren't most baby stars named Apple or Suri or something? Roofucus sounds like a disease. No, no, it's actually it's part of a constellation. Roofucus is about 400 light years away from us. Not close enough that you can get there, but it's close enough that we can see what's going on. I think my cousin had a bad case of Roofucus. The audience doesn't like my cousin. That's okay, I don't either. So, this is an infrared picture of baby stars, huh? The baby stars are the ones that are red. So, usually the younger a star is in the Spitzer colors, the redder it is, because it's cooler. So, why do you use the robotic Spitzer Space Telescope? Maybe you can see in the infrared, but we can't without help. So, the Spitzer Space Telescope helps us to see longer wavelength radiation or radiation that's caused by cooler objects. You typically kind of think of infrared as heat radiation. So humans can't see without robots. <laughs> no, no, I said we can't see infrared radiation without special kind of telescopes. That's very interesting. Producer Bob, do you still have that artist concept of human domination plan 14B? Oh, yes, it's all coming together. What? Our audience doesn't want to hear about our plans for universal domination? Are you just making these numbers up? Ah, uh, uh, okay, fine. Baby stars, right. Back to baby stars. So, Sean Carey, astronomer, how do these baby stars form? Well, the stars form as the stuff that they form out of, which is just gas and dust. Gas and dust? It's all the gas and dust that's between the stars that we currently have already formed. Um, you know, coincidentally, our space station actually runs on hydrogen gas, and there sure is a lot of dust in here. I hope all this gas and dust doesn't mean our space station is about to turn into a star. I uh, no, <laughs> you wouldn't. Uh, you have to have a, a fair amount of mass, at least something around the mass of our own sun to uh, collapse. You have to be pretty massive and dense there. Writing spot here is pretty dense. As they collapse, they condense, and as they condense, they get hotter, and when they get hot enough and dense enough, then a new star forms. They get hotter, huh? Well, I've been told by the ladybots I'm pretty hot myself. Come on, you've got to admit that I'm the reason everyone watches. Okay, I'm about to initiate a writing stunt. Don't go away, folks, or you'll miss the uh, explosive conclusion of today's episode. So, Sean Carey, astronomer, do you have any last thoughts on where baby stars come from? Okay, well, basically, you, you, when you form a star, you just need to be able to get that gas and dust to start collapsing under its own gravity. 
And if you have a stellar wind or supernova explosion, which will drive a shock wave into this material, then the material will start to compress, and then you've just kind of pushed it over the edge. Great. Well, I think we've had enough of you. Have a good day, Sean Curie Astronomer. Oh, you too. Goodbye. Well, thanks for watching, everyone. Until next time, remember, robots will rule the universe. Good night. Wait, did he say explosions can trigger star formation? Well, at least we have to get big ratings for this. Darn it!